So normally when you guys get to the guns and the sports, I'm <laughs> done. <right? laughs> Here's Sorry. the thing. You guys started talking about guns, and I don't know if you know this. I finally started getting into guns. Okay. So I started <laughs> shooting recently. I went to a like, – go check out my channel if you want to. you wanna, have a gun it, yet? There's a, we own a gun. It's What'd my roommate's pick? gun. I haven't purchased it. It's It was a hand me down from his dad. I think it's a Ruger or a Luger or whatever the fuck it is. Okay. Is it a revolver? I don't know what it is, is it, right? Is, but I went and shot a 22 and a 9 millimeter handgun, a couple of different ones. Right. Um, and it's like the videos up on my channel, YouTube suppressed the show, of course. Uh, but uh, I loved it. Holy f did I love it. It was so much fun. Um, I like it wasn't very safe. So if you watch the video, like I got a lot of negative feedback, but now I'm like, I'm no longer scared of guns. Now I'm into this. Sh now they're talking about guns. I'm like, oh yeah, tell me more about these guns. They're like, no, let's talk about some coach or some team that does something in some sport. I don't All know right. what you're talking right, well, about. Well, let's rewind a little bit. Let's, let's go back to the gun. Uh, I, I, I feel crazy you. Gun? Just, like, yeah. you need a gun. First of all, you need a gun. Let, so let's talk about what your, your first gun should be. And, and like, like, like. What would you say your price range okay, so is? Okay, so I I was very comfortable shooting the twenty two. It was like shooting a pea shooter. Perfect. So so am I? If I buy a gun for home security and I get a twenty two, that's got enough stopping power. No. To where some shows up, I can put them down, right? No, no. Um, it, it depends on the scenario. It seems like your uh hypothetical assailant is going to be crazed. I think we can all <laughs> agree on that. So so when you added crazed with perhaps like like drug induced psychosis, like. 22 is probably not the best thing for home defense. You might want the nine millimeter, right? Okay. But because I was but, a little more uncomfortable shooting that for fun. Um, yeah, and that and that makes sense. Um, but but for plinking and for fun, you want a Ruger 22 caliber semi-automatic pistol. Okay. Now they make these things. It's like a Honda Civic. A lot of guns are like Honda Civics in this way, in that you can get a plain Jane one for. I don't know, $350 to $450 or something like that. That'll be very, very nice, and it'll be like a like a hammer. It, it does every job well, and it's fun to plink with, and it's cheap to shoot. The Ruger uh, Mark, Mark IV is probably yeah. what they're up to now. It's, it's a semi-automatic thing. Um, I, I like them in stainless steel because they, 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 look, they look nice. But you can also buy them customized so that they're all tricked out, and they're various colors, and the barrels... Are, uh, are fluted, which means there's like parts of the barrel cut out so that it's lighter and they've got special uh, magazines, they've got special triggers, special uh, uh, cocking mechanisms in the back, special grips, all of that stuff. Right, um, right. But that is the pistol and the gun in general that I would recommend to just about anyone as their first purchase if they're not going to use it for anything other than targets and plinking and fun. Now, if you ever wanted to go into hunting, I really like the pump shotguns, like the Remington 870 pump shotgun is $300 or something like that. It will literally last a lifetime. I mean, 30 of years of heavy use, no problem. That you can, you can disassemble and reassemble it incredibly simply, and it, it just works. It just works, as Todd Howard would say. And, uh, and, but it's a 12-gauge shotgun, right? So it's, it's, it's got a wallop to it, but the, the, the bonus is... You can hunt birds with it. You can hunt deer with it. It's excellent for home defense. You can shoot beer cans with it and watermelons with it when you're being silly. It does. It really covers every one of the bases for a, a, a firearm. But but like I said, if I were recommending one for just fun, and right. it sounded like you enjoyed the 22, the 22 is also so cheap to shoot. Uh, and you can order these bullets from a company called I think it's Piney Creek or Piney Mountain that you can order tracers. And then it's literally like a Star Wars blaster. You turn your 22 pistol into a Star Wars blaster, and you see every bullet as soon as it comes That's out of cool. the barrel. And oh, green shit, that red. sounds fun as shit. Yeah, yeah, they're very cool. Can you shoot um, those at gun ranges? Like if, you know. No, no. Uh, you, no. You'd need to go out onto like some like public land or something like that, or some sort of like friendly shooting range. It's like a buddy's field or something like that. So perhaps right. that's not a good recommendation for everyone. But if you have access to your own place to shoot... Uh, gun ranges in general frown on things like armor piercing ammo, incendiary ammo, steel core ammo, Dragon tracing threat. ammo, anything that's going <laughs> to mess with their liability and their expensive uh, backstops, targets, and, 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 and stuff like that. Um, so, so you, uh, if I'm summing this up, you put them in two guns, right? A, a 22 Ruger of some sort and a Remington 870. I, that's exactly what I would do. It really depends on how you feel about shooting a 12-gauge shotgun. Now, I was shooting a 12-gauge shotgun when I was 70 years old. I just put the, 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 the stock on, in my armpit, 
and kind of lean down and use it that way. And I could handle the recoil then. But for some people, it's big and loud and scary and it hurts. Yeah, see, the the what gave me my anxiety for guns, I mean, obviously the fact that I always had suicidal uh, tendencies and suicidal thoughts, so I didn't want to have a gun around. I'm pretty far past believing I'd ever act on it, so, so I don't feel com- uncomfortable anymore. But originally... Um, when Boy Scouts, they gave me a little 22 to shoot, a little 22 rifle. I'm like, oh, this is great. This is fun. And then it gave me like a, I guess a nine millimeter or like a slightly larger one to shoot. And I'm like, oh, this is great. A little bit of kickback, but nothing bad. And then they thought it would be funny to give me a shotgun, but not warn me that I need to shoot it different than I would a rifle and that I was going to get a kickback from it. And so it floored me and I dropped the thing and it scared the out of me. And then they panicked because I dropped it. So the rest of my life, I'm like, I'm done with guns. I'll never hold a gun again. Mm-hmm. Guns. And then I was hanging out with that girl for a while. And she's like, let's go to a shooting range. Let's make a content. Let's face one of your biggest fears. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm no longer scared. But I don't think I'll ever be comfortable with a shotgun again. You'd be surprised. It, it really depends on the ammunition that you're putting into the shotgun because it runs the gambit. There are right. very light loads, very light ammunition you can put in there. Um, I, I don't think I'm all that unique, but I can hold the sh- a, a full-size shotgun with one hand and, mm-hmm. and, and and shoot it just fine, and the recoil is like this. What you do know, you look hand- for? How do you know which box is a light load? Asking for listeners. It is pretty complex. It's stuff that I have memorized, but like, so there, there's a few variables that make up a, 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 a 12 gauge shotgun round. If we're just talking about 12 gauge, there's the length of the cartridge. There's two and three quarters, there's three inch, and there's three and a half inch. Most li- most of the time, it's two and three quarters inch. That's the standard. Three inch used to be magnum, and but now three and a half inch is is, is sort of considered uh, super magnum. It's usually used for like uh, geese and and really heavy and, and deer and and even turkey and stuff like that. Two and three quarters in length. Then there's the amount of shot, a projectile that's actually inside of the shell, and that ranges from seven eighths of an ounce all the way up. If you're talking about the magnum loads, to like two ounces or something like that. Generally speaking, an ounce is a is a is just fine for a target load for a kind mm-hmm. of shotgun load, uh, or an ounce and one eighth, or an ounce and one quarter. And as you step up, you notice that extra. You totally notice an eighth of an ounce difference in the projectile that's coming out of the shotgun. And then there's the velocity. Velocity is very important as well. Velocity times mass equals force, right? So that and that's true on the force that's being delivered as much as it's true on the force that's being uh, delivered to you in recoil. So the velocity is important. Now, there are some shotgun shells that are made for like target shooting, I guess, like, mm-hmm. and, and they go like 1,000 feet per second, which is very slow in my opinion. But there's some of them that are up to 1,300 feet per second, and that's very fast. It's a, it's a big difference to step up from the two. You can, it's a noticeable difference in both felt recoil and in performance. So If you were picking a light load, like what would that combo be? Between like the three an, aspects you just talked about, it'd be like an ounce going to, uh, 11 or 1150, 1200 feet per second in a two and three quarter ounce shell. It'd okay. be the cheap ones, basically. Is light, light, light. typically just a light load, or it could be no. Like, not well, it could be it could be anything, right? Okay. Because okay. it depends on the particular bird you're shooting. Um, you know, if you're shooting doves, I've I've definitely seen uh, Dale Earnhardt had these. Uh, Junior had these special shells. They had an eight on them, which is his race car numbers, and it was seven eighths of an ounce going really fast. You know that 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 was kind of the the the, the oh, selling point. Dale like, Earnhardt, they, I get it. The race car drivers, like, yeah, it's seven eighths of an ounce, small package, but it's going fast, and it was like thirteen hundred fifty feet per second. We we're like, ah, oh, this this almost this is good for ski. This is cool, but um, so like bird sh- bird shells, it depends on the bird, right? Mm. So like doves and uh, doves are are kind of heavier, and then crows and then ducks and stuff like that. Like some of the duck loads are scary powerful, and the turkey loads are good enough to be self-defense loads in my opinion sometimes like they're out they're outrageous when you started i thought you were going to point boogie towards a full-sized nine millimeter yeah he, he didn't sound he sounded like he really enjoyed the 22 and yeah the, the nine and, millimeter was enough kickback to where i was pretty nervous so let me it. ask you do you know what you were shooting Mm-mm. no so we, we try we try to couple it if you go, if you go bring up that video right now you'll be able to see what we shot oh, yeah. yeah but um but here's it, what i wanted to say yeah, if you have a smaller nine millimeter, something that someone might carry for like self defense in their purse or their you know on, in a holster, it kicks a lot because that that gun is light and it's meant to be carried all the time and not shot a bunch. Right. If you yeah. have a full size nine millimeter, something you might keep next to your bed, the gun mm-hmm. is so heavy that the bullet doesn't kick it back into your hand a lot. Right. So, right. It, it's the kinda... Sig P two two six full size handgun that I have that shoots nine, like it really doesn't kick. 
much at all because of exactly what you said. Like, it's just too heavy. It, it beats most of the kick. Whereas you get a little, you know, I know it's not a nine, but like a little Derringer or something. Like, yeah, that's going to kick your... What about what about a rifle? I mean, I wouldn't have a problem getting like a decent gun cabinet and keeping a rifle and a shotgun in it. Do you recommend a rifle for home defense? First of all, the twenty two that you shot is the one I recommended. That's a uh, that's the cheapest Ruger version. Ruger ten twenty two. No, no, it's uh, a pistol. Oh, oh I, yeah, yeah, it's it, yeah. He's shooting the Ruger uh, twenty two caliber pistol. Uh, that's one of the cheaper ones. There are others that would feel nicer in your hand and look nicer as well. Because that one felt really nice. Yeah, it felt really good. But when by the time we got to the nine millimeter, he's like, the way you're holding it, you're gonna blow your thumbs off. And I'm like, what? Because that then, then I'm nervous again, right? Yeah, and he should so, say that. <laughs> he's like, yeah, that's not he, a good. What was he saying? Like, keep your thumb out from behind he the said, slide. Right. Yeah. And I, and I was like, well, clearly, but like, then I was so nervous about how to actually hold it, and I'm like, I'm doing this because now I want I want your thumb, one thumb here and one thumb in the back, and I'm like, all right, but now I'm not fucking nervous about holding the thing. Why, you know? But of course, obviously, he's there to teach me. You know, no, we don't really show bad. him. He's- but he, yeah, he, he didn't, could have been a better tour guide into the world of guns. He, he yeah, was that's pr- a very aggressive I mean, way to start. <laughs> he, you know, he was pretty pretty civil. I mean, I walked in there with no gun knowledge, and he uh-huh. handed me a couple guns. So he was yeah. he was pretty cool about it, honestly. I had the same but experience, he, but the guy was it, great, Kyle. It's hard yeah. for me to tell what kind of 9mm pistol it is from, from the angle or anything. But yeah, you can tell you're, you know, you're, you're worried about it. And, and what, you know, you're, you're leaning all the way back and, mm-hmm. sort of let, and, and standing in a position where it's sort of controlling you. And if if you really lean into it and get more aggressive about it, like like the recoil is lesser and you're able to control it more, like you could probably feel that recoil going through your whole body and sort of pushing you back on your heels a little bit. If you're mm-hmm. if you're more leaning forward and more weight on your front foot and all that stuff, like like it, it's unnoticeable almost. Like like and 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 what he was saying, like like it's not gonna blow your thumb off, but like right here on the top of your the back of your thumb, it'll scrape it, it'll cut it, it'll draw a little blood. But right. you know, like you're, a you cat. know. I, I've seen it happen to dudes, and and usually they're embarrassed because they're gun guys, and it's like this ain't supposed to happen to me. I got bit by my Glock, and they'll just can rub some dirt on it. It's not a serious injury or anything, but yeah, you know the nine millimeter can be scary if if you're if you're just getting into it, and if it's something that bothers you, then you shouldn't own it. You know, you should right, right. maybe practice with it a little bit more, like maybe step up to it eventually. But initially, that Ruger twenty two pistol is the mainstay. It's the first thing I started shooting as a pistol as a five year old. Um, it's it's the way to go. As far as a rifle, there uh, the, the 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 possibilities are endless, right? There are bolt action rifles and semi automatic rifles. There are pump rifles and lever action rifles. But what I would probably recommend is the one that everybody says is the monster of them all, the the man killer, the AR-15, right? Because you can get a cheap AR-15 for four or five hundred dollars or something like that, and you. Again, it's like a Honda Civic. You, you could you could it get definitely that looks the part for sure. I mean, that would scare the fuck out of somebody coming in your house. Oh, for sure, for sure. The problem with that is for home defense is those bullets go through stuff. They, like, but they could potentially go. You, you might not hit the guy. Let's be honest. Yeah, right. it'll go through your wall. Could kill your roommate. Could go. Could mit, Could get lucky, and you could miss the guy. Go through your roommate's wall. Miss him. Go through his exterior wall and hit your neighbor. Because 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 AR-15s are kind of like laser guns in a, a little bit. They'll go through three or four drywall walls unless they hit brick or, or a couple of two by fours. They're not just going to stop in their tracks. Well, you so, just talked me out of an AR right there. <laughs> Holy yeah, shit! Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. Shoot up my neighbors for fuck's sake. You, you absolutely could. And then you get in that that horrible liability scenario of like, well, yeah, that guy did break into Boogie's house, but Boogie killed his neighbor who was asleep in bed. The shotgun, on the other hand, yeah, that it, it's got much it's got all the force but not the velocity and not the uh the penetration so it'll hit a drywall wall and it'll pitter out and like scatter on the right. other so side so if i'm it. using spread um would you recommend loading a, a shotgun kept at home for self defense would you recommend like um like some buckshot for that i mean cuz that's still going to have stopping power right i mean obviously slugs are going to put them down but uh the, sl- the slugs are just going to make it harder to hit him and it's it's actually going to penetrate through Everybody says buckshot almost all the time. that close range, birdshot's going to fuck you up. That's what I was about to say. Everybody recommends buckshot. But, okay. like, I, I don't know. I, look, I've never been to war with a gun. I've never been in a self-defense scenario where I had to shoot someone or anything like that. It's like, like, But I have hunted a lot. And I've shot deer at every range. You can imagine I've shot coyotes with shotguns using buckshot, birdshot, um, uh, turkey shot, all everything in between. And I found that birdshot at close range 
drops a deer to the ground and the deer dies in about two and a half seconds flat. Um, and I would imagine that the, the gun battle is going to happen in your, in your bedroom. So to me, it just feels like a powerful bird shot is good enough. Certainly a turkey shell, but like, like if you want to appease anyone who's going to be looking over your shoulder and be like, so what kind of man killer bullets you got? Cause I got the ones that'll kill him. Set him on fire and then irradiate the corpse. <laughs> His family won't even be able to bury him in a proper cemetery. <laughs> like, a lot of people feel that way. They, they, they really want to soup this thing up. But, but, but practically speaking, I've killed a lot of fucking animals with shotguns. And all of the bullets that I've never shot yeah. anything with a shotgun and be like, ah, it wasn't powerful enough. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I mean, Kyle, I to be it. honest with you, I, if there were non-lethal options that would keep me safe, those are yeah. options I would look at. But the reality, because I don't want to fucking kill any, even somebody who's made the mistake, some lunatic is like, fuck Boogie and fuck his politics and fuck him. I'm gonna murder him. I don't even want to kill that guy. I don't want to kill nobody. There so. are not non-lethal options that are re reliable enough to risk your life on, in the hopes of of, of preserving theirs. Right. That's mm -hmm. what I would say. If, now, there's a reason that cops carry a taser and a sidearm. It's, it's because that taser can be deployed in very specific scenarios. But if you watch cop videos, they fail continuously. If you watch cops use rubber bullets out of shotguns, if that guy's jacked up, if he, if his wife, I've seen scenarios where like the, guy, the guy's wife will it's on leave PCP him. or some shit. Well, or, or he's just upset. He's just very he, upset. He just his his wife has left him. Determination is what it is. The guy will be in the street. Holding a blade, no shirt. His wife has left him. He's ready to die. He's and they start pegging him <laughs> with these rubber <laughs> shotgun shell rounds, and he's just—you can tell they hurt. He's not unresponsive, but he's not undeterred he's not either. Broken. He, yeah. He's still ready to slash with that knife. So I, I, I feel like for home defense, you just go lethal. So while you know, Kyle's you're, educating everyone, uh, Boogie mentioned he'd get a gun cabinet which raised alarms with me. Now, I have a special needs kid in the house, so my stuff goes in gun safe. So everything I have is locked, locked. Is a cabinet the right solution for him? I might be too biased towards safe. What do you keep a gun in? And he has parties. He's an adult. Um, like, like, like what I would recommend is if there are going to be people in the house that, that you don't trust, that you wouldn't trust to leave in your house alone with your gun, mm, if that's mm -hmm. ever going to be a scenario, then there should be some way to lock the weapon away. Now, there are trigger guards. That's the cheapest option. That basically make, renders the weapon inoperable unless you have the key, the code, the combination, etc. cetera. Um, and, and that would do the trick as far as safety. But it doesn't prevent them from stealing your weapon. If they, and right, if they steal right. your weapon, go home with a hammer, knock the thing off, and then do harm with it, perhaps you're liable to some degree. Mm -hmm. Probably not because they've, they've gone through two or three steps of your uh, deterrent to, to achieve that, that, that set effect. But still... Um, you can get a locking safe that's not like some crazy like spin the big dial and punch in a digital lock thing for a few hundred dollars. Um, you can go to a tractor supply store, like a big sporting goods store. I went to Dick's the other day, and they had big safes that 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 are locking with steel walls, and they're like twelve hundred dollars, fourteen hundred dollars, something like that. That may be overkill for you. I feel like if you're in a in a in an adult household where you're there most of the time. You can stick the thing in the closet. Although we're saying all this publicly right now, so to come full circle, that since we're saying it publicly, and and we may be uh, alluding that Boogie's got a shotgun under his bed, <laughs> right, okay? right. But then if you're home, if you're home, and this is for home defense, I will say this: if you're in bed at night and you hear a window break, or you hear, or you're all alone and you hear the door being forced open, the last thing you want to be doing is fumbling with a code a mm -hmm. key, one of those high school locker style spinny bullshit things. You Having want to, to be, load it at the last second because you kept it unloaded. Yeah. You, you want to be able to lay hands on that thing and be armed in, in, in seconds because that might be all you have. And, I, and, and again, that's sort of the mindset that a lot of guys who are like, yep, and now he's irradiated. Mm -hmm. Like they have, but, but just because someone, just because you disagree with someone doesn't mean that when they go outside and they say it's raining, doesn't mean it's not raining. You know, sometimes, right. sometimes stupid people are right about things. Sometimes ignorant people are right about things. And I think this is one of them that it, that if you're in a scenario where you don't have children in the home, you don't have irresponsible adults in the home and you generally are at that home, keeping things secure with your person, then I want the gun loaded and close to me. 
I mean, that's how my roommate sleeps with his. It's, it's, I know exactly where it is. I know exactly how he keeps it. It's loaded, ready to go. It's not in a gun safe. It's, it's tucked away. It's not obvious where it is, but it's, he can easily, if he's asleep, he can have it in his hand in, in 30 seconds, 20 sure. seconds. So just, and I, there I want to provide the like, counter uh, argument, you know, just so mm-hmm. Boogie can make his own decision and, and the listeners, you know, like I picture you doing these magic, the gathering parties. I picture you, you know, like, do you ever have like, Hey, everyone throw your coats on the guest room bed or, or something like, you know, it, it, it if there's people in your house who you wouldn't trust alone in your house, you know, guys who go to the bathroom and might go exploring, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Do, mm-hmm. do the people that you hang out with sometimes bring their kids? If that's the case, locking the gun is essential, you know? Yeah, you're right. You're right. Absolutely right. Yeah. Or as far least... as like the home defense itself, like I think Bill Burr even had like a bit about this a few yeah, specials yeah. ago where like, a lot of people who aren't familiar with guns want to go with the handgun because it's the littlest. It seems the least intimidating. You know, it, it's just, it feels more manageable. If you're in a high stress situation, it's much, much easier as a gun amateur to wield a shotgun than it is a handgun. Like that is the most disservice firearm related thing that Hollywood has done is people think shooting handguns is easy. It is not. Go no. to your range if you haven't shot a handgun. Send that thing out only like seven yards and see how you do on that static paper target. I guarantee you're not going to be nearly as good as your cod avatar. Like it's not that easy. (laughs) Whereas with a shotgun you're keeping the barrel away from you, you've got both hands to stabilize it. Like it's just a smarter decision for defending your home. You know, I'm sure Kyle has lots of opinions, but I think like there's a reason the shotgun does so well. And the reason the shotgun is the chosen weapon. Shotgun shotgun for home defense. And almost any scenario, even if you're a fucking expert with a pistol, like, like, like at seven yards, I could put every single bullet in a quarter, but that doesn't mean that if someone's running down a hallway at me with a butcher's knife, already co- covered in someone's blood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, I'm that, not even his first stop of the evening. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't mean that I'm going to have those same skills. You know, I'd like to, you'd like to think so, but maybe not. Whereas you just kind of point the shotgun at a bad guy. And, and that's, that's kind of enough because at 10 yards, it's, it's, it's shooting a pattern of death that's as big as a basketball, essentially. Imagine you're shooting basketballs at someone rather than shooting not even a dime, because bullets are smaller than dimes. You know, bullets are... It, Plus, the, the length of the barrel makes it really easy to point, you know. Like yeah, it, absolutely. I can hit and things two with, hands, a, with an AR-15 or F-2000 20 on it. at 25 yards pretty reliably. You know, but if I have a pistol in my hand with a four inch barrel as opposed to whatever it is, 18, it's not as reliable. And then then the last thing, this is experience I wish everyone who had who thinks they're good at shooting, do it under a clock, right? Because I can hit paper target. I'm not special. Like, I mean, to act like I'm some great shot, but I'm pretty good at paper targets. You know, when I take all my time and I fire once every five seconds and stuff like that, I've competed in shooting a couple of times and I was the worst there. You know, when you put a clock on you and add some stress and, and a timeline and, and, you know, all of a sudden, like, I'm not as good as I was before. Yeah. And yeah. take that, make it combat, and I assume it's times 10. Sure. Absolutely. And, and, and like, 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 I've never been one to, like, have a big head about that and be like, well, I can... Those watermelons didn't stand a chance today. <laughs> Who's to say a Cambodian hit squad would do it better than, <laughs> than 85 pounds of melon? I, I, I would say that they will and that I'll be terrified and that I'll be missing a lot. And that the more I miss, you know, in a video game, you ever start missing a guy in COD and it just makes you want to spray more and more and more because mm-hmm. you just yeah. want the, that you want the engagement over with. I feel like that's that I feel like that's not just a video game response. That's a human being response. So shotgun all the way. Although. Um, and, Accidentally there, going prone behind a barrel is probably just a video game thing. <laughs> I drop shot when I defend my home. Every time. <laughs> I'm prone the whole time. Every time. And, actually, and, like when they come when they break in, I actually jump crouch through the window. <laughs> <laughs> and so I come right through, blow their head off. And Boogie, a lot of Boogie, there are other shotguns in the twelve gauge. That's something that not a ton of people know because Hollywood has popularized the twelve gauge. And, you know, in general, it's the most popular one. There are ladies' shotguns, as I yeah, think of them. The t- 20 gauge well, would be just fine. 20 gauge is a big step down in recoil and, and in cost and in size of the weapon. And it's just as effective when you put the buckshot in there. Or, it's, it's what size? 20 gauge. 20 gauge, right. And I could go into a whole complicated thing explaining what the gauges actually mean, but it's irrelevant. But It's basically the size of the bullet, right? Mm-hmm. So the, 
I'm gonna have to do it now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. No, okay, okay, but here, here's this, here, you want to hear a really dark story? I've never sure. told anywhere. This yeah. is so fucking dark. So right about the time of the divorce, I was having like a lot of suicidal ideology, and I have not told the story anywhere else. I should not tell it. I am not going to tell it. I'm fuck it. I went to Walmart, and I'm like, "Hey, ma'am, can I see one of those junior shotguns?" And he's like, "Yeah." And my goal was just to see if I took the shotgun home with me, just in case I decided I wanted to end it, which I had considered. Yeah. Whether or not I could hold this and get it in my mouth, pull the trigger. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to stop giving you gun yeah. advice at this point. Okay. I so, no, I'm just I kidding. I'm kidding. Boogie I'm just kidding. At Dick Sporting obviously, Goods obviously with the I'm barrel well in his mouth. This. Like, obviously yeah, this I'm will well do. This. Right. And so, and so I'm like, I look at the gun and I'm like, okay, this is, I, this is not a good decision I'm making right now. I need to give this man back yeah. this gun. But that is the day I became aware that there were multiple shotguns because my roommate who was with me, um, who was obviously trying to just, Help me survive the divorce and survive everything. He looks over and he's like, that was like a 20 gauge. And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, look, if you buy one, you really want the 12 gauge. <laughs> and I don't know if he meant to like. You don't, don't want to just be he... injured. Right, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're not going to injure stop. yourself with a 20 gauge. Oh, I did it. I gave him the advice. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> no, trust me. The not only my... will the 20 gauge Excuse blow the top me. of your head off. <laughs> You'll find right, the smaller trigger much more manageable. <laughs> <laughs> I think my roommate was literally just more like, man, you're not going to kill yourself with a 12 with a 20 gauge. You need the 12 gauge, man. You <laughs> get the 12 gauge. There's still a junior shotgun with the 12 gauge. Okay. Like that's what I think he was saying. Nah, man, the, the 20 gauge would work fine for home defense and all that. And, and really everything. Um, and, and, and I, I think I can do this quickly, but the gauges are complicated and, and overcomplicated. It's an old school gauging system of measuring these things. Essentially what they do is they, is they say one, a, a ball of pure lead, the diameter of the barrel, how many of those would it take to equal a pound? And in the case of a 12 gauge, 12 lead balls, the diameter of the barrel equals a pound. So the, the higher the number goes the smaller the barrel is. So a 28 gauge is rather small. It's, it's, it's less than half the size of a, of a 12 gauge. And you might say, oh yeah, he's got the 28 gauge, much more powerful than the 12, but that's not the case at all. It's a very, very light shotgun. But there's a, there's a 410 shotgun, there's a 28 gauge, there's a, there's is that a 20 called a 410 gauge? Like it's, it's just called a 410 because in, in, in the case of the 410, it has nothing to do with gauge anymore. Now it's the diameter of the barrel. It's it's a forty one caliber barrel. Um, so so do they it, have those in long guns, or are those just like the judge handguns? Like yeah, those? they have them in long guns too. Like like huh. that that's the one that they often give to children. If the children, if the child's a bitch. Yeah. Now how's the four ten <laughs> for suicide, Kyle? Is that a good suicide gun? I, I'm not going to answer that question. Uh, <laughs> and, then the 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 and then on the other side of the and then on the other side of the scale, uh, there's guns above the 12 gauge. There is a 10 gauge. Mm -hmm. I've shot the 10 gauge. It's very scary. And there there used to be 8 gauge and a 6 gauge that were used for things like elephant and other big game and things like that. But um, but yeah, you could do a 12 gauge and a and a or a 20 gauge and an 870. You'd be shocked at just how manageable it is. You know, you throw some ear protection on. Um, you, you know. A, Prepare yourself, and and I promise you, it's it's nothing you can't handle. It's, Last it's like gun talk question: Which caliber or which round is more deadly, the fifty cal or the Remington seven hundred? I think that's what it might be called, the seven hundred nitro seven hundred. You're not familiar with the nitro uh, seven hundred? No, I I am. Well, I would. You're that's probably the elephant gun. Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. I I don't know. It, mm. it it would be like which which is more deadly getting hit with a cement truck or a bus you know fair enough all right probably prob the, the nitro I was trying is probably, to measure my penis here kyle <laughs> yeah the 700 nitro is probably delivering more like foot pounds of oh we lost kyle right there sure like what's being oh, done it, with, with a with a measurement like that i would imagine but the 50 bmg is like whatever like 700 grains you know going over 3,000 feet per second. They use it to take out Jeeps and radar uh, <laughs> dishes and stuff like that. So take, you know, pick your poison, cement trucker bus. I just found this video of a four-gauge shotgun that's only 20 seconds long <laughs> that the guy <laughs> shoots. Yeah, let's watch it. But I can't imagine what the purpose for this weapon could be. <laughs> 
All right, I think I'm... the purpose is to knock you on your ass. Let's uh, see if this guy's a bitch or not. Hold on, I need to resize it. All right, are we ready? Yep. Ready, set, play. He shouldered it. He's got his stance done. Well. Whoa, Good geez. God. He handled it very well. He handled it very well. That's very well? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you see how Good like he was God. leaning forward a ton? Yeah, he I... handled it well. That's not what I thought you were going to say. Now he's a smaller he's a smaller guy. That guy's probably like five nine, and he's an older fella. He handled that pretty well for for, for his size, especially uh, way better than all those uh, Middle Eastern guys that were shooting the Nitro Seven Hundred video. I know you're <laughs> referencing Woody. Where like the gun, they'll shoot it, and before like their body even registers the strength of it, the whole gun has flipped. <laughs> like like it just, it just t entirely oscillated twice in the time it takes the body to register the strength of that weapon. Right. And then, like, this is where I'm going to get really insulting. This will get me in a lot of trouble. But, like, I'm not a particularly intelligent person. I think I'm slightly above average, but barely, if that. Maybe just average, right? That said, sometimes we're dealing with people who are dumber than me, and that's pretty fucking scary, because I am not that bright. So sometimes we're dealing with people who genuinely believe anything they read on the internet, or genuinely cannot understand context, or genuinely cannot understand the world around them, those are some of those dangerous people. Those are also some of the people who might show up at your front fucking door one day with a gun. Uh, you know, so I, I, you know, I don't know. Those, I, like, sometimes you're dealing with some, like, when you put yourself out there, you're dealing with some really crazy, scary people. And unfortunately, I have an anxiety disorder. And so the, when you talked about mental health earlier, that's my biggest issue, is, like, I, 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 I'm so terrified that one of these, like, crazy pieces of shit are going to fucking show up my front door. And I've had somebody show up my front door. I've had a couple people now show up my front door, so. Do they have bad intent? Like, I've had a lot of people show up at my front door, but usually they like me. I had one guy who had like really scary intent. He wanted to be my best friend, and he said he Googled me. He was like, I don't even remember driving here. He was like super creepy. I had another guy show up at my front door, and he's like, I don't like what you have to say on the internet. And I was like, okay. And I just closed the door, and that was it, and he left. Wait, like, I'm not going to engage up, with that, that guy. That initial first guy, I want to know a little more. Like, he showed up and he said, showed up. I don't even remember driving here. I want to be your best friend. So so I open my front door, and I'm, like, expecting a delivery, and it's some just dude in a delivery van, like a flower delivery truck. And I open the door, and I'm like, hey, man, what's up? You got a delivery? And he's like, no, man, I'm here for you. And I'm like, oh, what? And he's like, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to be friends. And I'm like, we're going to what now? And so I didn't have a gun at the time. I do now. But I had a baseball bat that I kept next to the door. So I reached over and grabbed my baseball bat where he couldn't <laughs> see me doing it. And I'm like, so tell me your story, buddy. And he goes, well, I really relate to you. And I really like what you're doing. And I really like, uh, I like your videos and stuff. And I'm like, oh, this is all good stuff so far. I'm not like baseball bat ready, you know. Um, and he's like, oh, yeah? Right. It's exactly that. It's exactly that. I'm just like, it's just over here in the corner. And my friend Chad, my roommate Chad, he's the one who put it there. And he's like, in case, you know, just in case. I'm like, all right. Well, this was the in case. This was the case, right? So I lean over. I'm grabbing the fucking thing. I'm like, all right, tell me more. I've got it here behind the door, you know. And he's like, I know watching your videos and like listening to all this stuff. And I just knew, like, I knew we had so much in common with the video games and the abuse and growing up abused. And I'm like, I just knew all I had to do was meet you one day. If I met you, we'd be best friends. And so I, I'm watching one of your videos and you mentioned that you lived in Northwest Arkansas. And I, I don't even remember doing it, but I remember flopping over to Internet Explorer and I searched for your name and your address was there. I just gotten docs for one of the first times. And because and there was your address. So I got into my car and I started driving and now I'm here, and I don't even remember driving here. I just know that we're going to be best friends. And oh, I'm like, gee, this is scary as fuck. Dude, yeah, the red flag like, for me was Internet Explorer. This guy's fucked. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, okay, dude, so this is not how this is done. Like, any chances of us becoming friends was shot to shit the moment you rang my doorbell, okay? And he goes, no, don't, don't, don't say that. Don't say that. And I'm like, dude, who do you work for? Like, is that your <laughs> boss's van? Because your boss probably wouldn't like you driving your van here to do something like that, don't you think? And he's like, you're right, you're right, you're right. I shouldn't have done this. I should have thought. I'm like, yeah, you definitely should have thought. Go home and write me a letter 
the way anybody else would. And we'll see. I, I'm not saying there's a 0% chance. I'm saying you screwed it up pretty bad. But maybe if your letter is like cool, like maybe we'll talk in email and then we'll see what happens from there. But you dude, I've got plenty. <laughs> yeah, I got plenty of friends, but you can't show up at someone's door like this, okay? Like it's not cool. It's scary. There's dangerous people out there, and I don't know if you're dangerous. No, dude, I'm not dangerous. I'm not dangerous. I'm here to be your friend. I just want to be your best friend. I want to be close. I I need a friend. I'm like, and I get that. And I get uh, that. So go home and write me a letter. Ask him. I want to go. Now this is Chris making me Hansen. sad. You got to go, Chris Hansen. At that point, let me ask you a question, Bill. Did yeah. Did you bring anything with you? <laughs> well, what do you mean? It, is there a plastic bag in your car full of items <laughs> perhaps well, well yeah I, I brought some things but yeah. but you know that doesn't mean i'm intending on doing it. Well, what'd you bring well there's a there's a stun gun yeah yeah, yeah. what what else uh there, there's a there's a club yeah yeah what else uh, 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 a couple rolls of duct tape some plastic sheeting heard you down for Peggy. well i heard you mention how you like peanut butter cups so <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. that i've placed leading out to the back of the, the, the two van. things i know about you is you like peanut butter cups and you're open to pegging i so, brought magic right, cards right. i brought magic cards i figured, figured you know uh, i bind you tie you up a little bit feed you some peter peanut butter cups we play a few games of magic <laughs> i stun you a few times we have a good old time come on his his letter was very much a manifesto it had no paragraphs oh. no periods it was all just words vomited into an email. Oh god! And it was just like like fucking three pages of like you know. I'm like I'm done. I can't. I don't even know what any of this crazy shit is or what it means. But <laughs> what was like if, if it wouldn't right. divulge too much about him that's private. Like what was kind of the the vibe of the manifesto? I skimmed it because it was unreadable the way it was written, and so I was just like I don't want to even get engaged at this point because like I've got too much shit going on. My marriage is finally starting to fall apart. It was like we're the first beginning of that and I'm dealing with that. And we were looking at buying a house, which is why we bought the house, by the way. I wanted to get the fuck out of that apartment once I got doxxed and people started showing up, dude. You know? Mm -hmm. so, makes sense. Uh, yeah. I, I had I a, a similar kind of story better. that went the other way, right? So um, I'm at home. We're doing whatever home stuff. And the doorbell rings and I come there and, and it's a stranger who's like uh, in my demographic. I'll say a young guy, like 18 years old or something. And he goes and he's got his Irish accent or something. And he's like, you know, Woody, I came here all the way from Ireland to see you. That's my Irish accent. And, and I, I'm just like, oh, my God. Like, this is so amazing. Like, what a super fan. You know, like it, he came here from Ireland to see me. And he's like, yeah, yeah. And I, I'm, I'm visiting University of North Carolina like 30 minutes down the road. But, you know, those two reasons. And I'm like, right, right. Yeah, he came from Ireland to see me. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but he turned out to be really cool. Yeah, I, I, it always went the same way, roughly. Like, you know, they'd, they'd be really nice. I'd do my best to, like, ask them about themselves. We'd do a selfie and, you know, that was it. That's when it's helpful to have a very young demographic, I would imagine. Like, like, like the people that would show up to your doorstep, Woody, versus the people who would show up at like some other people's doorsteps. The, the, the demographic, e even if you get a crazy <clears throat> fucking eighteen-year-old or sixteen-year-old who's brought there by a guardian or something like that, what's the worst could happen? But when you've got like I don't know, some forty-year-old dude who's become obsessed with you or whatever, that's when it's really scary. I feel like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking about like I. I hope mentioning his name doesn't cause any issues. Like Hickok 45 is really into sure. gun issues. And he's, uh, he's if people don't know, Hickok 45 is an encyclopedia of gun knowledge, it seems. And uh, he, he was a teacher. So he just sort of lays out and teaches you about these weapons. Mm -hmm. And I can only imagine that he has guys who are also, I don't know how old he is. I'm going to call him 50, who are also 50, who like, I want to be your friend. And, you know, maybe just a little off center. Yeah. I mean, I've watched Hickok 45 videos where I've thought, I want to be this guy's friend. Yeah. Like, he seems, he See? seems awesome. Like, Proving the little my things point. he'll know, like, he'll shoot his gun and be like, now, the thing to know about this, a little bit of history is actually in 45, they did another version uh, post war that had XYZ in preparation for Korea, or what would be Korea. They didn't know anything. Like, he'll have just like a litany of details, and I'm sitting there, like, learning something about a gun that I don't even care about. I'm like, <laughs> really? That's fascinating. Uh, like, <laughs> he's a nice guy. I've met him. Uh, four or five different times like at various gun shows and meetups and stuff like that always been uh, he's got a he's got a good sense of humor um he, he's he's very self-deprecating like uh and uh and and he's got he's definitely got a sillier side that i think he feels like he's not able to explore uh in his videos hmm. and uh and and whenever we kind of palled around a little bit like like that's kind of what we discussed like he's got videos where 
Um, he's in like his smart car or whatever, like that ridiculous, tiny little super lame mm-hmm. car, like doing drive bys on targets in the forest and stuff like that. And like, 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 but that's not really what people want from him, I guess. So, he, you know, he does those long format educational videos, but he's definitely got a sillier side where I'm sure he'd like to be out there just smashing pumpkin men or something like that, you know. What's neat I, about him, so his channel, he covers all kinds of guns from modern things you'd find in a, you know, Danish army or something to old school stuff. And it's the like cowboy era that always captures my imagination. I want some cowboy revolvers. I need more lever action guns. Like, yeah. And I, it's like, I feel like I saved a lot of money by not going down the wrong roads for me. Because I on his channel, I just see what I like. It's cool. Well, I, I like want a big with table him. with leather on it. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, he'll, he'll <laughs> Wait, where did that come he'll, from? He has well, it. He, he has a big table he with leather. He just, you know, he reloads and, and, and stuff and he lays yeah. the guns down. I'm like, I need that. He's got his nice loading table that's probably like six feet high because he's a giant person. Yeah. <laughs> he's a giant person. But like, like what's is. so impressive with him is he'll take like a Ruger LCR which is a hammerless, small, like self-defense revolver. And it's got, there's no hammer, so it's a full trigger pull every time. And he'll be like, let's see if we can hit the gong over there 200 <laughs> yards away on my first shot with a Ruger LCR. And then he'll like pop it twice and be like, ah, it cut, someone's getting lucky today. You know, I couldn't do this on a normal day. And it's like, you son of a bitch. Like, that's like Wayne Gretzky being like, you know, I put up 200 points this season and dominated everyone, but we all have luck sometimes. It's like, yeah, Wayne, but you did this last season too. Like, <laughs> he could edit, his but shooting. it doesn't ah, seem so like incredible. it. Woody, I'm telling you, there are people whose entire career. It's not, and What's so funny is I share a lot of trolls with wings now, which is really amusing. Mm-hmm. Oh, really so yeah it's a lot of his like the people whatever i recognize like usernames and shit and they'll come in and they'll say stuff about wings and, and chat like what about wings i don't fucking talk about that guy i don't worry about that guy let him live his life i don't give a shit and like i guess they're expecting me to take the bait the way wings does but i don't ever give into it you know i'm sure people mm-hmm. want your 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 valid opinion and like thoughts on his weight loss because you know you're you're like a year ahead of him or something like that yeah. on the same road mm-hmm. essentially so so like I think a lot of people who who want Wings to succeed in his weight loss, and I'm one of them. I want Wings to succeed in his weight we loss. We all do. I, of course. I guarantee we all do. Yeah. I I I have this this I and you can almost see it like in him now. Now that he's lost whatever he's he's lost because he doesn't talk about it. But he's I think he's I, I would guesstimate he's lost about seventy pounds. Maybe maybe somewhere between seventy and ninety pounds or something like that. Like you can yeah. already see like the man that he could look mm-hmm. like. He know, will. He will pass me, uh, I'm fairly certain, because he was at a s- much smaller starting weight than I was. I don't know that he'll lose. My biggest ever was 600 pounds, so I'm 250 pounds down from my biggest. I'm 180 pounds down from my surgery, pre-surgery date. Um, yeah. But I don't know that he'll lose 180 pounds, but he'll definitely weigh less than me very soon. He'll be yeah. less than 350 so, pounds very soon. I'm so proud of him. I'm so happy for him. Yeah. One of the things that I would want to ask you, because of your experience and your your you almost unique perspective in this in that you're also you're a youtuber and you've had this surgery and you've started at such a high weight it, as in regards to him it's like it, he's gone on his diet and and i use that word literally like what he's eating consists a lot of like wendy's chili now a lot of people shit on that because it's a fast food like food or whatever right but but to me the fact that he's consistently eating it that that, that like he's got into this mode of like that's what i eat it's mm-hmm. 400 calories I, it, it's it shows about, routine. It's the mm-hmm. routine seems to mm-hmm. me very healthy, and I feel like the routine is 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 what's healthy. Like if if he just for the cameras or YouTube was like, yeah, look at this spinach salad with kale that I'm eating with a light vinaigrette. We know you're not eating that every single day. He absolutely should not be eating a fucking kale salad at this point. It's the last thing he should be fucking putting into his body. Sure. It would be tantamount to suicide. It would be tantamount to organ damage. It would be tantamount to fucking bone damage if he was eating garbage like that right now. He needs to be focusing protein, protein, protein. That dude needs like 120 grams of protein a day. And if he's getting it through Wendy's chili, if he's getting it through beans and meat, that's not the ideal way to do it. The beans alone would be it. Making a pot of fucking pinto beans would be a really great system. Mm-hmm. But if, if that's his way of doing it, that that's better than, you know, I mean, at the end of the day right now, it's about nourishing his body and pushing the limits of his new stomach to nourish his body. And his body needs protein. So the biggest issue he's facing right now is 
whether or not you will lose lean mass as well as fat at the the rate he's burning right now. And if Mm. you don't maintain your protein, you will burn lean mass. We're talking about bone density. That, that's damaging your body for the rest of your life. Or we're, we're talking about stripping your muscles, which lowers your, your, lowers your basal metabolic rate. Yeah. And so the, the goal is to try to make sure you only lose 50% of the weight as lean mass. That's the minimum goal. Like you want to lose 100% fat, but that's impossible. Yeah. But you want to, you don't want to lose <clears throat> half of your weight wants to be 50% lean mass, 50%. If any, anything, if you lose more lean mass than fat, you've done yourself a great disservice, right? Yeah, you're putting yourself in the hole. Right. Because like the, so. the big thing people don't get with muscle mass is your basal metabolic rate. Mm-hmm. Like the more of that you lose, you're just making it harder on yourself because yeah. then you're just fueling a body of fat and bones how, and organs. Do you know, Taylor, like like because there's an actual number, like how much, how many calories one pound of lean muscle will just burn on its own per day? Oh, like, like, like there's a formula I, for it. And I've always thought that was really know. interesting, like, like for like long-term weight loss or long-term healthy lifestyle – would be to pack on, you know, three extra pounds of lean muscle mass. Like, 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 and and a pound of muscle mass is is is, is a big deal. Like, says like, that uh one fifty. Uh, take the perennially popular one stating that one pound of muscle burns an extra fifty calories a day while at rest. So if you gain ten pounds of muscle, your resting basal metabolic rate is going to increase by five hundred. Yeah, it's a big deal. It's a big deal mm-hmm. to, to to gain that muscle. So like in your case, Taylor, I I, I would I'd love to know what. Your ba- your basal metabolic rate is because you've have packed on several pounds of lean, powerful muscle mass. Grr. Grr. Oh, I, I put on a lot. Like I can, I can, I don't know the actual number, but in the last, you know, year and a half, two years, whenever we started that like initial fitness challenge that I actually stuck with, and I still work out very consistently. Like I can noticeably eat more shit. Yeah. Like if I. Like, you know, three years ago, if I had a weekend where on a Sunday I was like, fuck it, I'm going to have a couple beers, I'm going to have a whole thing of Cheez-Its. Like, the next day I'd wake up and be like, oh, oh, I feel huge, and I feel awful. But now, like, if I do splurge on a bad day, my recovery time is so much quicker. Like, I'll feel a little bloated, but I don't feel bad. Like, I feel like it burns off pretty quick. Is this a good ad, fitness talk? 